Hello YouTube, welcome back to another game of StarCraft 2 Legacy of the Void. This is going to be the third game between Hydra and Namshire. A Zerg vs Zerg is what we've got here. And let's see how this one plays out. Now quick introduction of our players before I mention uh, the scores because of course uh, there will be spoilers very shortly. If you haven't seen the previous games I really recommend going to the description and clicking on the links there to see whichever one you haven't actually seen yet. And let's see, on the top left hand side here of Prion Terraces, we've got Hydra. Hydra is on Team Root Gaming and he is from Korea. His opponent is going to be Namshar, spawning as the blue Zerg on the bottom left hand side here. Namshar is on Carnage Esports, as you can see here. Very cool little icon. And he is from Sweden. So let's see, we've got uh, Gas Geysers coming down from both players. Actually, both players going for spawning pools first hydra's ones one is just a little bit ahead but that's not really going to make a big difference once uh, you know with the time that it takes the zerglings to actually run down looks like he's going for an expansion and he's going for the gold very very risky move to do but of course if it pays off if you manage to hold it off at that point it makes it absolutely 100 percent worth it let's see his namshar going to do the same no he's not he's actually going for the normal expansion so not, not going to see a huge amount of aggression from either players. They're probably going to send out six early Zerglings just to see what they can do with them. But there's not going to be a whole lot of follow-up until these bases are fully established. Which also, of course, means that if Hydra holds off against the first six Zerglings, which is very, very easy to do if both of you have about six Zerglings, then he's going to be at a prime position with this gold base. Let's have a quick look here. Metabolic boost is on the way for both of our players. Bit of an oversaturation on this gas. Now I've done a bit of research about oversaturation. Gas makes no difference. Obviously, as you can see, the, the timings of the, of the drone movement is pretty much perfect. But on minerals, there's actually a bit of an advantage if you, um, if you oversaturate on your mineral line, there is an advantage in minerals. And believe it or not, it's not as small as it looks. I, if you notice the mineral line, it's there's some parts of the mineral line that are further away than the others. So this is a very close patch. This is a very close patch. This is a close patch and this one. But this one, this one, this one and this one are actually a little bit further away. What that means is, and trust me, I've done the research for this. I've, I've made averages and it does stack up. The further mineral lines are actually perfectly fine and very, very efficient with three workers on them. So despite the fact that it says 16 out of 16, you could go up to about 21, 22 drones and still be quite efficient with the income. If I had the, the notepad available, I would bring that up right now, but unfortunately I don't. So uh, I'll just tell you the research that I did find. So, oh, actually a huge amount of zergings here. That's going to be interesting to see how that turns out. Now the queen has moved in, into position. She's definitely going to try to hold us off to the best of her abilities. And I'll talk about the, the income details that I found a little bit earlier as well. Or later rather. A big surround here from the Zerglings. Queen is going to get destroyed here. The very, very risky gold base is going to very likely get taken out here. Roaches are in place. Roaches are good against Zerglings. But when there's a bunch of Zerglings like this, it can be quite disastrous with a nice surround. But as you can see, Roaches managed to hold us off. I believe they did get into the main base here, but got taken out. Let's have a quick look at the units lost tap. Looks like eight drones were taken out in that engagement. I think that was quite heavily favoring Namshar there. So very, very good play here. He is a little bit ahead on workers. And as I was saying, if the gold base is held off here by Hydra, he will be in a prime position to take this game. If he doesn't manage to hold it, then at that point, he could very, very well lose the game. Now, the fact that he's lost the queen there is a bit of a disadvantage to him. The question is, how much did he actually lose with that? Was it worth it for for uh, for him to take the gold? Or should he have taken a slightly more uh, safe, natural base? There we go. Round number two of Zerglings. Let's see how much he's going to manage to do with that. Looks like he's running straight past the attacking units here. This is going to be absolutely huge. He's going to run straight into the main base. And by the time these units get in there, he could clean this, clean up this uh, this whole mineral line. Managing to surround a few Zerglings. Or uh, Roaches, rather. Taking those out. And I think that he needs to 
I don't think he actually should engage onto this. He might take out the Ravager, but the Roaches should be able to clean most of this up. I would probably take out just a few of those workers, see how much you can do with that. And then just forget about this engagement. He does still have one Zergling here, that's quite interesting. So is he going to manage to pick something off? Nope. He's going to get taken out. These drone taking a kill for himself. He's like, yo, come at me, bro. You ain't got this. He's going to be seeing if there's any sneaky expansions, which honestly I don't think he would expect. He has done a considerable amount of economic damage. Nine drones have been taken out. Lost 54 as Zerg needs to do all that damage, but at the same time, the economic damage is what matters. He's putting Hydra behind, despite the fact that Hydra has actually taken the gold expansion very early. Now, just to note, three gases are in position right now. This kind of hints just Roach and Ravager play at the moment. Not quite enough to support Hydralisks. Almost managing to snipe off a free Overlord there. Any Overlord snipe as Zerg versus Zerg is actually quite crucial means that your, your opponent is going to have to focus a little bit more on Overlord production rather than, you know, extra Zerglings. One Overlord is four Zerglings, which, you know, two Overlords means you've got a nice round on a, a few units. Now, funny enough, Namshire opting to go for a few Banelings, which is definitely, I think, is a strange thing to do. He's obviously going to try to use them, um, use them on drones, but realistically, he needs to counter off these, these Roaches right now. They're the biggest problem that he's having. Just a note um, for the people on the Twitch, I will respond to any questions or queries or uh, comments you have on the chat after the cast, because I am focusing on recording this for you too. Let's see, this poor overlord running for his life is going to get taken out here. What actually happened here? It looks like there was something going down. Didn't do a whole lot of damage though. That was probably those banelings actually. So a quick look at the units lost. 11 workers have been taken out so far. So not a huge amount of drones lost, but... You know, in a fast-paced game like this, it is quite important to, to take out pretty much anything you can take. And let's see, army supply very heavily favoring Hydra right now. 55 to 38. So many overlords being taken out. I feel like being an overlord in a Zerg versus Zerg match right now is just. It's like a death sentence. But there we go. The engagement going down here. I think that he's probably going to be able to come out on top here if he is basically dodging all of those corrosive biles. Possibly going to be able to snipe off this hatchery as well. If he manages to snipe off the hatchery then that'll be a very difficult position for Namjar. He's going to be falling behind the economy very very quickly. And it looks like he's just interested in chasing this army down. He does have the bigger army. He has more Ravagers. He's got, I think, a similar amount of Roaches. And all those Grosser Biles going down. Taking out a few workers with that as well. 63 against 52 right now. The only difference is, of course, Namshar's base is closer. So he's able to reinforce faster. And he is going to be coming out on top here. Taking out pretty much all of Hydra's army. But Hydra, he's got reinforcements streaming in from all three of his bases i think that instead he should have just focused down this base he shouldn't have rushed straight in he's obviously tried to take the game from that point on but i think that if you take the oh nice cross of vials if he was to take the the hatchery there he could have just steamrolled his opponent about two three minutes later with a much much large larger armor supply there we go the difficulty with engaging onto your opponent's army is that he's closer right now and he's going to have an easier time to reinforce his bay, his units. So it looks like a lair on the way for Hydra. The question is going to be what he's going to do with that. I mean, he does have four gases right now. Which is not quite enough for Mutalisks. Could very well be Hydralisks and Lurkers. Let's see, this base has been spotted. He obviously knows that he needs to punish this. If he doesn't punish this, then Hydra will very, very quickly be coming out on top here. An army supply. I think this is slightly favoring Namshar still, despite the fact that, that he is on the attack here and Hydra has his reinforcing units coming in. I think that it's still quite nicely favoring Namshar. Does have a few of his own reinforcements coming in, just a few at a time, not a huge lot. A bunch of Roaches coming in here. This is going to be a nice pop here. He's going to be able to surround his uh, Namshar's units from all sides. And there we go. Now finally starting to come on top here.
of what is going to be happening here. Glide of the Constitution is on the way for Hydra, so he's definitely interesting in pretty much continuing with this Roach play. I mean, Roaches, I think, personally, are a little bit overpowered. They cost very little, and they're quite strong. They do a lot of damage, and of course, they're very cheap. And there we go, the Surround going down from Hydra. Is he going to engage straight onto this? I definitely think he will. Just running straight in here. I think he just needs to continuously push this right now. He's got the reinforcements coming in. He's got the bigger army itself. I think the only thing that they're missing right now is the extra upgrade here. Namsha already got his level 1 attack. Hydra only getting his one now. And here we go. Looks like the engagement going down. I think Hydra is still coming out on top here. I mean, he doesn't have the Corrosive Biles, but as long as, as, as he dodges the Corrosive Biles of Namshar, I think that the, the actual damage that he'll be able to pull off is going to be very, very equal. Now, more reinforcements are streaming in here for Namshar. He doesn't have the base right behind him, but he does have the extra units. His army supply is also greater. Does have a few reinforcing units. Does look like Hydra also reinforces his own units. Is he going to be able to... What he needs to do right now is pick off some of these low unit, low health units. They're the ones that are pretty much making the difference here. Still being able to do damage, but... Of course, being so, so close to death. And a back and forth here. 48 to 67. And, oh, this is a huge amount of reinforcements here. Looks like Namshar just continuously pumping out more and more ro roaches. And as I said, if he managed to snipe off this hatchery... This could have very, very easily went in Hydra's favor a long time ago. This is quite scary here. I mean, 60 to 72, he doesn't have as much units. And these roaches are very compact. Again, it's going to be very, very likely to do with who dodges the corrosive vials better. Level 1 attack for Hydra is about to complete. This is going to be a crucial time. If he manages to avoid engaging full on before that... He should be just fine. That is just about to pop right now. And there we go. He's got himself the Glide of Constitution, just like Namshar, and all upgrades are very equal. Level 2 is on the way also, but as you can see, Namshar's one is just a little bit ahead. This base is about to be mined out as well. His main is quickly starting to mine out as well. It looks like he's doing a transfer right now. Over here, actually. These workers have been slightly mismicroed. I hope he brings them back on. Hydra, come on, you need this. Oh, there we go. Fixing his workers. Looks like both of these players right now waiting for their level 2s. Maybe not. There we go, the engagement going down. There's more Ravagers here for Hydra. But the question is going to be, who's going to hit the Corrosive Biles better? You could have a bunch of Ravagers, but if you don't hit those Corrosive Biles, not going to really make that much of a difference. Huge amount of damage right now from both of our players. I, I, the thing I find weird about uh, Roaches is they've got this green bile that they, they spit at their opponents, but it's like like an acid kind of spit. And when you've got a Roach versus Roach army firing at each other, it's like it's like a wall of green. It's like a river of green. Oh, interesting enough, Namshar going for his fifth base already. Hydra doesn't quite have his on the way. Question is, what is the income like? Namshar is ahead, as you can see, he's 300 roughly minerals ahead. And Hydra is also behind on gas, so this is actually quite a nice position from Namshar. Oh, actually, I forgot to bring up the scores. One apiece by now. By the way, this is game number three. I believe it's one apiece. Let me just double check that. Yes, it is indeed. So, game number three. I do apologize for bringing, up, bringing that up so late, but that is actually the correct score. 1-1 one, one each, and it is best of 5, not best of 1. That's definitely a mistake. Ooh, here we go. Engagement going down here from Hydra, taking out a few uh, workers, and of course, the base. Is he going to manage to snipe off this gold base? Yes, he is indeed. Going to lose all these roaches, but is it worth it? Honestly, this late? Uh, you know what? I would say, yeah, there's still a lot of minerals left on these patches, so probably worth the trade.
Now he's fully mined out here. He's got this one base running. This is about to be fully mined out as well. This base also very, very close to being mined out. Like, very close. There's only about three mineral patches left. And I really like the fact that these two Zerg players, they're just constantly focusing on their their macro game. They're not doing a huge amount of, of rushes, which, as some of you may know if you follow me on YouTube, of course, uh, or so, sorry, if you're a subscriber, rather, um, you might know that I'm not very fond of the huge Zergling and Baning aggression at about two, three minutes into the game. It just seems like a bit of a... It's just too, too early and, ooh... Funny enough, now I'm sure with his Mutalisks. Does have a few Mutalisks on the map. Let's have a quick look at how many he's already got. I did miss the production of that. He's got 9 in place already. 10th one on the way also. So this could very well turn the tide in his favor. Since Mutalisks, they can dodge those corrosive Biles quite easily. Army Supply, I believe, is favoring slightly Hydra in terms of ground units. But the Mutalisks could make all the difference here. And a big, big surround here. I think this is going to be the end of Hydra. He's losing everything right now. 1-1-3 one, one, to 30. I think this is going to be very, very last straw that pretty much ends the game for him. There we go. GG has been called. Meaning that Namchar takes game number 3. Bringing the series up to 2-1 in his favor. Let's move on to game number 4 very shortly. And that's it for game number 3. I hope you've enjoyed it. Of course, leave it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't done so already. I'll see you guys in game number 4, where we're going to see, is this game going to end with a 3-1, to one, or is it going to end with a 5th game in the on the horizon? Good luck, take care, and I'll see you guys next time.